Hello, MyZilla here. I've decided to break my YouTube virginity and come out of hiding and actually start making videos. My full intention is to begin a series at some point soon called The Earth is Flat, Rory Cooper Says So because he seems to be one of the prolific flat earthers on the YouTube committee and community. Um, and the wonderful thing about all his videos is that with a simple understanding of physics and even just geometry, you can easily debunk everything he's got to say. Um, and I love that fact because it means that we can demonstrate very simply why the Earth is not flat. Now this video, I'm going to look at one particular YouTuber, YouTube commentator, called Ioven Drake, and a particular claim he makes about reality on a flat Earth and a spherical Earth. Uh, Ioven Drake is quite typical, taken as a case study, for the ignorance of flat Earth um, proponents, um, and the fact that he believes that his C++ programming skills give him an insight into the inner workings of mathematics. Furthermore, Ioven Drake does display a complete ignorance of the simple laws of geometry. Um, the first of which, and the first basic law of shapes, you could call it, would be that in order for all distances between all points on any two shapes to be the same, those shapes must be congruent. That is, say, they must be geometrically identical. In other words, the same size and shape. In case anybody's in any doubt about all this and thinks I'm making it up, these are a few quotes uh, taken directly from conversations that I've had with by Evan Drake that he himself has made. Um, the first one is, there is no difference between reality, his emphasis, for either a flat earth or a spherical one. Next one, the distance between any place on the earth is the same regardless of whether it is a flat circle or a sphere. Next one, a spherical earth being flattened out with the North Pole at the centre would be the same land size. Travel distances anywhere would not change at all. Another one, there is no difference in distance because what we measure can be fitted to either. And lastly, when Antarctica is the edge, there is no difference between a sphere earth and a circle earth. Now, I know Drake is not alone in making such claims. Um, you'll find claims similar to this made by another YouTube user called Jenin Kologia. Apologies if I've pronounced that wrong, it's difficult to get the phonetics right when you're just reading it. And they will assert that there will be no difference that you would be able to measure between the distance of any points on Earth, whether it is flat or whether it is spherical. Now, of course, this is strikingly similar to the claims made by geocentrists, who suggest that there would be no difference between the apparent motion of other bodies in the night sky, whether you look at it from a geocentric point of view or a heliocentric point of view. Because they make these claims, but they don't back it up with demonstration. Now then, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that for Ioven Drake's claims to be true there, then the first basic law of shapes must in fact be false. That is to say, that it is possible for all distances between all points on any two shapes to be exactly the same without those two shapes being geometrically identical, i.e. the same size and shape. There is another upshot to this, which I think many people would uh, instantly recognise, is that if Ioven Drake's claims are true, then he is able to do what cartographers are not. That is to say, he can present a flat representation of the Earth, the spherical Earth, where all the distances and all the land masses are completely in agreement with how we experience them on a global Earth. Given that no maps can do this, I would be very surprised to see what Ioven Drake can pull out of his ass. Anybody who uses hiking maps will know about a little key on those maps, pointing to Grid North, True North and Magnetic North, and they will know that these maps differ in how big the angle between Grid North and True North is. This is because, even though these are the closest representations of the surface of the Earth, 
If you stitch together every map of the same scale from around the world, if you could get ones for the oceans as well as lands that is, you wouldn't get a true representation of the surface of the earth, or even of the distances as portrayed from one map to the next. Now the conversation that led to Irvin Drake making these claims was one in which I attempted to point out to him the very real fact that anybody living south of what I guess flat earthers might want to term the government conspiracy concocted line, the equator, would experience larger circumnavigational distances and larger distances in total um, if they were living on a flat earth than if they were living on a spherical earth. To which his reply has always been, no they wouldn't. I've constantly tried to point out to Raymond Drake that what he's claiming is that two different shapes can be geometrically identical thus meaning that he believes circles and spheres are the same thing. He's constantly said that that's not what he's saying at all, and then again gone and stated the exact same thing. What can I say? Well, some basic geometry may help. To begin with, we can demonstrate that on a sphere you can have two circumnavigational distances of the same length. You can take one circuit around the Earth tracing all points equidistant from one pole and find it has the same length as a circuit around the Earth tracing all points the exact same distance from the other pole. On a flat Earth, no two circumnavigational routes tracing all points equidistant from the centre can be the same length. Simply put, anyone travelling around the world in the southern hemisphere will find it takes them less time than travelling around the Earth at the equator and yet they can find a line of latitude in the northern hemisphere where their route takes the same amount of time. This is impossible on a flat earth. Now, some flat earthers try to claim that nobody has travelled such routes, so how could we know? And some even seem to claim that we couldn't tell if the Antarctic actually lies at what we would like to call the equator, blocking our passage to what we would like to think of as the southern hemisphere. As I will show, none of that matters in order to prove Iovan Drake's conjecture to be wrong. In order for the distances between all points on any two objects to be the same, they must necessarily have the same area. Note, we're only talking about the points on the surface of the shapes here, so volume doesn't matter, though it'd be worse if it did, because flat shapes have no volume by definition. They must also have the same dimensions, all their angles and edges must be equal, which in this case means that the circumference of the sphere, or the hemisphere, and the circumference of the circle must be equal. So, if we just assume a hemisphere for a moment, spheres get even more messy from Iovan Drake's conjecture, then we shall need to calculate the quarter circumference, which would be the same as the distance between any point on the hemisphere's rim and its top. This will be analogous to the radius of the flat circle. The circumference is 2 pi r, just like a circle, so the quarter circumference will be half pi r. Now, the area of the circle is pi r squared, as I hope we all remember from school. The area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, and the area of a hemisphere, not including its base, is naturally half the area of the sphere, 2 pi r squared. Hmm, I can spot a problem coming up already, but let's go with it. Let's give the hemisphere a radius of 100, nice and simple. Units don't matter here, we could be talking about miles or millimetres for all we care. That gives us a circumference of 628.32. Let's take a quarter of that, which is 157.08. This is the distance along the surface from the top to any point on the rim. So this distance must be equal to the distance from the centre of the flat circle to any point on its rim. So we'll make this our flat circle's radius. Spot the problem yet? It will become clear very soon. Calculating the area of our flat circle, we find it has an area of 77,516.05. OK, so let's calculate our hemisphere's area, again not including the base, which will be half the sphere's area. Remember its radius is 100. This gives us an area for the sphere of 125,663.706, which we halve to get the hemisphere's area of 62,831.853. Hmm, we have a problem, don't we? Yeah, the flat circle doesn't have the same area as the hemisphere which means that all the distances between all the points on the two shapes cannot be the same. In fact, apart from the distances between the centres and any points, none of the distances are the same, and we can prove it. As we've calculated, the hemisphere has a circumference of 628.32, but the flat circle has a circumference of 986.96. This means that all the distances between all the points are larger on a flat circle than they are on a hemisphere 
except for the distances between the centre and any points on either shape. In fact, as the circumference of the circle is over 1.5 times that of the hemisphere, and the area of the circle is 1.23 times that of the hemispheres, and these ratios will be constant no matter what number we wish to begin with, the difference in the distance is going to be obvious and measurable. Now, some may argue that the Earth is an oblate spheroid. Well, that's okay. We just calculate for the oval of the polar circumference. The equatorial radius of the Earth is 6,378.1 kilometers. The polar radius is 6,356.8 kilometers. The more astute among you will realize from this alone that it's not going to magically make this flat Earth as claimed true. The equation for the circumference of an oval, the perimeter of an ellipse, is roughly pi times 3a plus b minus the square root of 3a plus b times a plus 3b. The equation for the area of an oblate spheroid is 2 pi a squared times 1 plus 1 minus e squared over e times the inverse of the hyperbolic tangent of e, where e squared equals 1 minus b squared over a squared. A is the semi-major axis, the equatorial radius, and B is the semi-minor axis, the polar radius. The given polar circumference of the Earth is around 40,008 kilometers. We'll take a ring 1,000 kilometers from the South Pole to be the hemispheres and the circle's rim. This would give our hemisphere a quarter polar circumference of about 19,002 kilometers, a polar radius of around 12,500 kilometers, an equatorial radius of about 12,650 kilometers, an equatorial circumference of about 79,482.29 kilometers, and an area, excluding the base again, just under 1 billion kilometers squared. Give our flat circle the quarter circumference of 19,002 for its radius, because the distance on the surface from the top of the hemisphere to the rim must equal the radius of the flat circle, and we find it has a circumference of 119,393.08 kilometers, and an area of 1,134,353,721.55 kilometers squared. Well, what can we see? There's a difference of nearly 40,000 kilometers in their circumferences and a difference of over 130 million kilometers squared in their areas. That's an area over 11 times the size of the USA. And we wouldn't notice that. Now we can compare this flat Earth to the actual spherical Earth and find that the area is over twice as big and the longest circumference on the Earth is less than half as long as the circumference of the flat Earth now. The equatorial circumference of the Earth is roughly 40,075 kilometers, and the given area of the Earth is around 510,072,000 kilometers squared. In fact, we can also notice that there is a massive difference between the spherical Earth and the hemisphere. The reason for this is that hemispheres and spheres are not congruent either. Thus, we would find it easy to spot whether everywhere we've explored is the whole of the spherical Earth as opposed to just down to the equator, and it would be just as easy as discerning if we were on a flat or a round Earth. Ignoring the insurmountable problem of them needing the same dimensions, lengths of sides and angles for the moment, we know that for the land masses to be the same on both, they must have the same area. The accepted land mass area of the Earth is roughly 148,940,000 km squared. The accepted land mass area minus Antarctica is roughly 134,980,000 km squared. The area of the seas is accepted as roughly 361,132,000 km squared. Land minus Antarctica makes up around 26.5% of the surface area of the spherical Earth. Whacking the same land mass minus Antarctica into our hemispherical and flat Earth models, we find our land masses now comprise only just over 13% of the total surface area of the hemisphere and under 12% of the total surface area of the flat Earth. That translates to the seas taking up about 862.5 million kilometers squared of the hemisphere's surface area and 999 million 373,721.55 km squared of the flat Earth surface area. That's a whopping difference between this flat Earth and the spherical Earth of 638,241,721.55 km squared, making the water surface area of this flat Earth over 2.7 times as large as it is on the spherical Earth. This is an area the size of 65 USAs. Again, 
flat earthers don't think we'd notice the effect this extra surface water area would have on the distance between the land masses. Clearly the distances between land masses will be significantly different between the two models, no matter how flat earthers will try and swing it. So, we can safely assert that it is impossible for the statement, the distance between any place on the earth is the same regardless of whether it is a flat circle or a sphere, to be true, and that it is impossible to simply fit reality to both models, no matter how much flat earthers might wish this to be true. Quite simply, geometry and the first basic law of shapes don't allow this to happen. We can also safely assert that the distances on land masses and the distances between them would be very different and that we would be able to easily calculate the difference between these distances. Not only that, but by measuring these distances, we should be able to determine which model is correct without the hassle of going into space. Suffice to say that we can easily state that when Ivan Drake claims that there is no difference between reality for either a flat earth or a spherical one, he is clearly demonstrating that he hasn't got even a child's grasp of geometry and he has no idea about the first basic law of shapes. This, unsurprisingly, seems to be a recurring theme in Flat Earth claims. Next time we're going to take a look at a simple experiment we can do to determine whether the Earth is flat or not. See you then. No, I haven't Drake. Look, here's a circle. Let's give it a radius of 100. That gives it a circumference of 628.32. Here's a sphere. Let's give that a radius of 100. Now that has an equator that has a circumference of 628.32, but the distance on the surface from the top to the equator is 157.08. If we simply flatten the sphere out, keeping the distance from the pole to the equator the same, then the circle has a radius of 157.08. That gives it now a circumference of 986.96. If we want to flatten the sphere out into a circle with a radius of 100, then all the distances between all these points must compress. And how much would they have to compress by? Over 36%. So the only conclusion that we can come to is that you, I, Evan Drake, are a mathematically impaired f**tard.